Hi, this is Jason Gillum from Secure Ideas. I have some updates to a um, burp extension that I've been working on since the middle of last year. Uh, this is this is actually I used to call this one Correlator. Uh, there was a lot of confusion with that name with uh, with um, that name and other tools with similar names. I've renamed it to Paramalyzer, and I did look around, and as far as I can tell. Uh, there are no other tools with similar names to Paramalyzer, um, so hopefully we're good. Um, now, uh, what this tool is for, this, is, this does, uh, it helps you um, become more efficient when you're doing web application pen tests, and you need to look at all of the various different parameters inside of an application uh, to figure out what they do and whether or not there's uh, you know, sensitive data that's being uh, mismanaged in the application. So it helps with that process and make, make to make uh, the manual part of the pen test more efficient. So um, I will walk through a little bit of how that works. Um, now, before I start, um, you have to actually install the, this is an extension to Burp Suite. So you have to have Burp Suite first. Then you have to install the extension. And I will just quickly go over this part here. Um, so to get to it, it's on GitHub. Um, you would go to the releases tab and download this jar file here and that so the, you want to go to you know the latest release download that jar file and uh, install that using the extender tab inside of burp suite and then it should show up with this parameterizer tab here okay um, if I, I will be hopefully getting this on the BAP store soon. I'll be uh, reaching out to Port Swigger shortly to see if we can get that on there. Um, once it is, getting to it will be a whole lot easier because you will be able to just install it directly through the BAP store. It is a Java-based app, so you don't need to install Jython or JRuby or any of those extra libraries. Um, so it should be very easy to plug in there. It's a very easy um, extension to use as well. The way it works is you go through your application and you uh, exercise all of the functionality in your application as a normal user. Do not start injecting payloads into your application yet. Okay, so you should be mapping everything out. Um, and the reason why you don't do that yet is you don't want to confuse Paramalyzer into thinking something is um, you know, a path-based input when it's not. Um, we want to see what does, how does the application behave? What sorts of values and cookies and, and maybe hidden form fields and things like that are, are being passed around uh, through the normal use of the application? So, um, so you'll do that. Uh, you need to have, for, for Paramalyzer to work, um, the parts of the application that you want to analyze have to be included in scope according to BERT. Um, so that's, you go into your, your history, you, you use the uh, uh, it'll say add to scope. I've already added mine on here. Um, and then under the target tab, um, there, that's where your, your uh, scopes will be listed. Um, it's sometimes a good idea to go in there and edit them to make sure you're actually including all of the files under a certain uh, host and, and, uh, and that it's all going to work properly. Um, so once that's done, you just go over to the Paramalyzer tab and hit Analyze it will go very quickly for a single page like this. If you have many pages in your application or if you have many different applications in scope, which is not that uncommon, then what's going to happen is it'll take a little bit longer, but it does have this progress bar on here, so um, you, you kind of get an idea how long it'll take. Uh, so far, I have not had this take any more than about 10 seconds to analyze even a large number of applications, so it is, it is uh, pretty efficient in, in how it does that. Now, what it does is it takes all of the parameters as identified by Burp. Okay, so, so Burp already internally indexes and stores the various different parameters with, with all of the um, uh, requests and response pairs. Um, so that's what uh, Paramalyzer does. It just uses the same data Burp already has um, and looks through it and says, okay, um, does some counts and that sort of thing. And also does some, uh, using regular expressions for the most part, uh, does some analysis on what those values may be. Um, now, if for those who have looked at Correlator before and just looking at Paramalyzer now, there are a few differences on how the interface is laid out now. Um, it mostly looks the same, but um, let me go through a couple of the, the, uh, the latest additions, which I think are really cool. Uh, first of all, the show decoded values here, it's, this wasn't here before. Um, so this is here and it's on by default. And what that does is 
on this example value column over here um, on the right hand side it will show you the the value the decoded version of the value um, so if, here I'll, I'll just unclick this for a sec so you can see the difference right um, so when I unclick that you can see that everything on there that uh, it's going to have the original encoded values like let's look at uh, at uh, this mm, well actually this top one here is probably the one that makes the most sense so see how it's all just kind of a garbage value right now showing the decoded value now it's a bunch of, of numbers it's been decoded automatically by Paramalyzer and uh, that's what it'll display. So um, if you have multiple different values for the same input field so let's say you've gone through different parts of the application and uh, the same field shows up in multiple places and it has different values they will all show up here um, you can actually right click and copy this list to a clipboard and that's very useful if you for let's say for example one of the values is let's say it's an MD5 hash um, you can very quickly just grab a list of all the MD5 hashes for a particular input uh, field and copy those paste them into your wherever you're you're doing your rainbow table lookups or whatever and just analyze them all at the same time some of the things that it'll identify, uh, it'll, it will identify um, various different hashes, most of the common ones. We have an MD5 here, there's a, a SHA-1 that's been identified, a SHA-512. Now all it does by identifying is it says, hey, um, this is a, a hex value of a particular length. And because it's that length, I'm going to guess that this is probably um, the secure hash algorithm 512 in this case. Okay. Um, some of the other things that it'll find, um, it will identify certain you know types of, of um, fields that, that might be of importance. And this one here is an email address. Um, it will identify credit card numbers. Now in this case here, we can see in the what is it uh, box over here, it, it walks you through how what Paramalyzer did to figure out what this was. So first of all, it had this starting value. It looked at it and said, hey, this has a percent %3D at the end. That looks like a URL encoded, so I'm going to URL decode that, um, which of course is an equal sign. Um, it, uh, it looks at this and says, well, this matches the, the regular expression for a common base64 value, so I'll, I'll try to base64 decode it. And it did, and it came up with um, a number and it looked at that number and said, I can't really make any sense of that. Uh, let me try to ASCII hex decode this number. And so it, it actually decoded this from ASCII, and then it gets to this other number here, 42, 42, 42, 42, and it says, well, wait a second. This actually matches the, the length of a credit card number. Let me run it through the LUN algorithm, which is a checksum for credit card numbers. Um, and, and it passed. So 42, 42, however many times, is a, considered a valid credit card number. Now in this case here, this is a test credit card number. It's a valid test credit card number. Um, so you can't actually use this to buy anything. Uh, but, um, but it is useful for uh, checking to see if a particular value uh, actually um, passes the LUN algorithm. And in this case, it does. So um, here's the LUN algorithm passing. And um, and it's gone through all of that. There's also a case of uh, let's see where is it? Uh, is it this one here? Uh, no. Oh, I know. Social security number. So it's it's found something that it thinks is social security number. Now, what was interesting in this case here is it was actually base sixty forty coded three times. Um, so it, it started off with this value here, which for those of you who are familiar with base64 encoding, you'll notice that I encoded it for the test value enough times that the equal sign doesn't show up anymore. Uh, and by the way, um, Paramalyzer is actually smart enough to realize that the padding may be incorrect anyway, uh, because it's not actually required. It's only required by the standard, but not required to decode. So um, it, it will determine if something looks like uh, base64 encoded even without the padding on there that's the equal signs at the end it will still attempt to decode it and so in this case here it's, it looked at this and said hey this is base64 encoded uh, let me decode that and then it looked at the the output from that and said hey this is also base64 encoded so let me try decoding that and it kept going until it got to something that it recognized as 
not base 64 and, and maybe something else. So, and uh, in this case here, it found a social security number. And it felt this was so important, it actually told us twice. So that looks like a little bug I need to fix. So um, that's basically it. Again, this is on GitHub um, right now. I hope to get it on the BAP store soon. On GitHub, all you need to do is uh, visit uh, my repo on there. It says Jay Gillum. And you'll see a burp parameterizer on there. Um, and go into the releases tab. Here, let me just go walk through this. So you, you'll click on this releases tab here and just take the latest release. It'll be a jar file. Um, plug that into burp and you should be good to go. Um, really easy to use. Um, and that's it. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave me comments either below this video or on Twitter or wherever. Um, or on GitHub, uh, and uh, definitely if the, you have ideas for new features, uh, especially um, types of, of formats that should be identified or encodings or anything that's not working right, of course, obviously tell me about that, uh, and I will, will do what I can to, um, to improve on the tool and, and really make this into something that's going to um, help us with with those uh, larger web pen tests um, especially. So have a great new year. Um, that's it for now and uh, we'll see you next time.